Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a drama film called Sammy Blood from 2016. Enjoy your viewing. The film begins with the protagonist, an elderly woman named Christina, driving in a car with her son and granddaughter. The car radio is playing national songs of the Sami, a small people of Northern Europe, to which the protagonist belongs. However, she declares that she wants nothing to do with these people and that she does not like their songs. Upon arrival, it turns out that they have come to the funeral of Christina's younger sister. But the woman is so against her presence there that she does not even want to lay flowers on the grave. She also doesn't speak her native language, pretending not to understand it. At the wake, the heroine covers her face with her hands to avoid seeing others, and then asks her son to leave earlier than necessary. Looking at the beautiful mountainous landscape outside, the woman quarrels with her son, who wants to stay the night to introduce his daughter to the Sami culture. Christina walks to the hotel to avoid being around her family, and while talking to other people, she condemns the customs of the locals and hides her origin. When her son knocks on the door to invite her to the deer branding ceremony, she does not answer. The film moves back in time to when the heroine was a girl named Ella Marha. She and her sister Gina cut the ear of a deer, because this is how animals are marked, so that everyone knows who owns them. They return to the herding camp, where the girls are getting ready to leave. Ella Maria promises to come back, and then she and her sister take a boat across the lake, on their way to the boarding school. The younger sister is upset about being separated from her family, and to cheer her up, Ellie Maria sings her a Sami national song. She reminds her that it is better not to sing traditional songs at school. When the girls step on the ground, the heroine carries her sister on her back. They pass by older boys who do not hesitate to express contempt for the Sami. At school, the teacher teaches them Swedish, forbidding them to speak their native language. As punishment, she hits them on the arms with a ruler. Elimarja does better than the other students, and she is even entrusted with the honor of greeting the school's guests. After swimming in the lake, the children are lined up in pairs and led along a dirt road, while the adults send off the representatives of the small peoples with disapproving glances. While brushing her teeth in the evening, Elimarja reminds her sister that she has to learn Swedish. Jenna does not like this, and she runs away. Later, the heroine spies on the teacher's house. Noticing her, the woman invites the girl to coffee. In the house, there is a textbook on racial theory, open to a page about the Laps, as the Scandinavians called the Sami. The teacher gives her a collection of poems to help her develop her knowledge of Swedish. Elimarja asks what knowledge is needed to become a teacher. At night, in the shared bedroom, her sister goes to bed with her, until the teacher notices and makes the girl return to her seat. The heroine continues to learn the welcome speech, improving her knowledge of Swedish. On the way to the gala, they again come across older boys who are making fun of the girls. After that, the students are lined up to meet the guests of honor, and Elimarja reads a speech from a piece of paper. The visiting officials examine the children, admiring their national costumes. Several children, including the heroine and her sister, are chosen for photographs. They are taken to a room where representatives of the State Institute of Racial Biology measure the size of their skulls and noses, examine their teeth, and compare their skin color. The man does not answer the girl's questions because he does not want to explain anything. Elimarja is told to take off her clothes for a photograph, and reluctantly, the girl does so, despite the fact that boys are peering through the window, whom the adults do not even try to drive away. After the humiliating procedure, other girls go through the same thing. At the next meeting, the teenagers call the girl an animal at a lower stage of evolution. This infuriates the girl, and she attacks the boy with a ritual knife. But he, with the help of his friends, takes the knife away from her and cuts her ear like a deer. One day, Elimarja steals a dress that was drying on a rope and puts it on instead of the national costume, which has become a kind of uniform for the Sami children in the boarding school. Soldiers passing by on their bicycles notice her and invite her to a dance, mistaking her for a purebred Swede. Hiding her school clothes in the bushes, the girl follows them across the field. Her sister catches up with her, but Elimarja tells her to go back. When the locals catch up with them, the heroine hides Gina in the roadside bushes. Almost reaching the dance, she washes herself thoroughly in the river, trying to wash away the smell of the Sami. Soon she is wandering shyly among the young boys and girls at the disco. She tries to strike up a conversation with a guy named Nicholas, and he asks her to dance. After the dance, he buys Elmarja a cigarette, and she introduces herself as Christina, to avoid giving away her background. She asks about life in the city where she plans to move. Later, they go to a secluded place and kiss. The girl is distracted by the appearance of her sister, who is looking for her with her teacher. Yina's appearance causes hostility among those present, and the heroine is taken away. When she returns to school, she takes off her stolen dress and changes into her national costume under the strict supervision of her teacher and tutor. She is then beaten on the back with rods as punishment. After this incident, the younger sister harbors a grudge against the heroine and does not want to talk to her. 
and Elamaria plans to move to the city for permanent residence. To do this, she asks her teacher to give her recommendations for further education there, but she opens her eyes to the bitter truth. Graduates of Sami boarding schools are not accepted into regular Swedish schools. Studies have proven that the Sami are not fit for life in civilization. Due to the injustice of the social system, the heroine forgets about her studies for a while. When she meets her sister, she tells her in her native language that she is leaving. When she asks why, she calls her insulting names and says that she is not able to understand many things. This brings tears to Elmaria's eyes. The heroine runs away across the field to catch a train. She looks out the window as the landscape flies by, taking her further and further away from her past life and her own family. Waiting for the passengers to fall asleep, she steals a suitcase with clothes. When she gets off the train, the first thing she does is burn her hated national costume, finally breaking the connection with her ancestors. Soon, the heroine takes to the city streets in her stolen clothes. She wanders, enjoying the unusual scenery, on her way to the house of Nicholas, her dancing partner. However, he was not home. Not knowing where to go next, she tells his parents that he invited her to visit and that she can stay with him. She is invited to dinner and is called Christina again. Then she makes up a story about her family, almost giving herself away with small details. Late at night, the heroine lies in bed and hears him discussing her with her mother. At night, she goes down to his first floor and asks if she can stay here for a few days until she finds a place to live. He doesn't like the idea, but promises to ask his parents. After discussing their immediate problems, the young people go about their business. While lying in bed, the boy notices a cut on her ear, but the girl does not want to tell him how she got it. In the morning, after breakfast, Nicholas's parents invite him to talk. They ask their son to kick the guest out of the house because they know she is a Sammy, and they don't want to have anything to do with some girl their son likes. The boy has to drive the heroine away, even after she offers her services as a housekeeper. Left alone with no friends, she has to spend the night in the botanical garden of the local university. During the day, she visits the library, where she admires the books full of wisdom. The librarian notices her and takes her to the director. Due to a coincidence, the heroine is enrolled in school under an assumed name. After hiding the ritual knife in the locker room, she goes to physical education class with her new classmates under the watchful eye of a suspicious teacher. After warming up, the teacher asks if the girl has done these exercises before and asks her to work out individually with her classmate. After class, in the locker room, one of the girls offers Christina to put on lipstick, and she agrees. During a friendly conversation, the girl asks why she needs a knife. The heroine reacts violently to this and pushes her to take her memorable gift. Despite this, her new classmates accept her into their social circle and teach her to gossip about others behind their backs. Soon, the principal summons the heroine to demand tuition fees. Of course, the girl doesn't have the required amount. She returns to Nicholas's house, where they are celebrating his birthday. She is invited to the table, and the guests get to know her. They have heard about Nicholas's mysterious girlfriend. The girls, pretending to be anthropologists, ask Christina to sing. After being persuaded, the heroine gets up and starts singing the national song. However, realizing that it is only a joke, she leaves the party. Nicholas catches up with her on the street to apologize. Christina asks him to borrow money to pay for her studies. When he asks why she doesn't ask her parents for money, she replies that they are dead. But during the conversation, she admits that this is not entirely true and tells him her real name. Having received the money, Christina returns by train to her native land. Looking at the deer, she rushes to the herd and chases the animals away. When she reaches the herd, she gives her mother a gift, but she silently turns around and walks away. The other members of the tribe look at the returning girl with disapproval. Later, El Marja teaches her sister to wash in the lake to wash away the Sami smell. Embracing her in the water, the heroine seems to have accepted her unsuccessful attempt to escape to a civilized life away from the reindeer pastures. However, in the evening, while treating her relatives to the cakes she brought, the girl shows her mother a receipt from the city school. She says she wants to sell the reindeer she inherited from her father and live a normal life. After that, her mother sends her away. Elimaria harnesses one of the deer and kills it with a ceremonial knife. In the afternoon, her mother and sister find her to give her her father's silver belt to sell. Without saying a word, the mother turns and walks away, and later Elimaria leaves as well. The story returns to the present day, where an elderly Christina is looking out the window. She leaves the hotel and goes to the church, where the coffin with the body of her sister, whom she has not seen since, is standing. Taking off the lid of the coffin, she bends down to her sister and apologizes to her. The woman then climbs to the top of the hill to admire her native landscapes. From the top, she can see a pasture with deer pens. Christina slowly descends and walks there in the sunlight, looking at the place where she was born and which has hardly changed in her long life, as if she had left it only yesterday in search of a better life. 
If you have watched the video so far, you should know that I am happy to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and follow the news. Klonsack Recapped was with you. See you soon.